It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Mike Evans. I will be your host this morning. Glad to be with you. You know, we've... um, been covering some issues over the course of the last couple of days that um, were kind of interesting, not the least of which is this VA debacle that we've been dealing with. But, you know, it's very interesting because the other day we had a problem with the, with the VA in reference to all of the challenges that are associated with, you know, the betrayal. And the, con- the Senate yesterday tried to pass a new piece of, of legislation that would f- effectively have made, and, and, and here's what you have to understand, the rub here is that it would have effectively changed the law or, and the rules to allow people who are uh, malfeasant in their job function to actually be fired. Now, most of us who are in the private world and not in the public employee arena, look at that and say, excuse me, I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, for the record, you can't be fired if you're a federal employee. That's what the reality is. You cannot be fired if you're an employee. And so the issue is, sending a text message because we're trying to get our phone lines functioning. We've been testing a new phone system. And uh, so here's the reality, folks. You cannot be fired if you're an employee of the federal system. No matter how bad your no matter how bad the treatment of the people that are your patients, no matter how bad the behavior of you as a as an employee, no matter how bad. Now, yesterday, Bernie Sanders came out and he stormed out there on the Senate floor and he said, We've, we cannot pass this bill because we have not been able to read it. And most Americans said, yeah, that's right, Bernie, go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the bill was only three pages long. Two and a half if you strip off the header. <laughs> It's unconscionable that Bernie Sanders would have done that. Now, he calls himself an independent, but he's actually an avowed socialist, which he even admits to. And the piece of legislation was specifically designed to allow federal employees who have been found to be malfeasant canned. Where are we when we know and realize that our nation has utterly failed to the extent that where we are with employment for the federal government means that the, the public service unions are more powerful than the Senate itself? Because that's the truth. That's the truth. Our second segment this morning will be the IRS bounty. We're going to create a brand new hashtag, and I'd like you to start using it if you're a Twitter user. If you're not, become a Twitter user and start using it. We're going to do a play on words here. The IRS bounty of $1 million is available for any whistleblower who will come forward. We're going to talk about that in the second segment. But the brand new hashtag that every American should be using is mutiny bounty. Not mutiny on the bounty, but mutiny bounty. In other words, a bounty for mutiny. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we mutiny. Hello. Think I'm kidding? 
Uh uh. Time's up. And it's time that we actually resolve these problems. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing good, Mr. Evans. Good. What do you think of that hashtag? Mutiny bounty. <laughs> mutiny. <laughs> not, not mutiny on the bounty, a bounty for mutiny. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. And if I do say so myself, and I thought it up just this morning, mutiny uh, um, bounty. <laughs> 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 I think oh, it, I, good. I think it's workable. It's easy. Everybody can remember it. And if we had enough people rallied around it, we'd actually be able to accomplish something with it. What do you think? Well, create it. Yeah, I, go ahead and create it. I already did. All you got to do is start well, using you, it. So you put the well, pound you, you put the pound sign before the words mutiny bounty and tie the words together, no space. So it's just pound mutiny no space bounty. And that way, you can send out any message you want there, including a link to the website where you can go, which, by the way, I, I'll give you guys uh, when we hit that, that, se that segment. But the point is, if we don't start to take control of this thing in some way, shape, or form, then, you know, for all intents and purposes, we've got we've to just kind of conclude and admit that it's over and it's done with and we've lost. And I'm not willing to concede. Yes. I'm not willing to concede. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, that's the thing. I mean, we have couch potato uh, patriots. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's our founders the called them sunshine patriots. <clears throat> sunshine patriots. They were strong when their sun, when the sun was shining. They were out there. Yeah, we're go we're fighting for it. Rah rah rah. But when it really came down to it. Oh yeah, um, it, it, it's kind of like you know. I, I I tell my friends all the time that you can't complain about the government when you don't go vote yourself. Right. You know, so, exactly. So it, that's the first thing I ask is that, you know, did you go vote? Right. I, I mean, are you active? Well, and, and, and that and doesn't mean just vote presidential. That means did you go vote for all for your school board, for your exactly you know, police sheriff? Did you you know, did you are you involved locally until you are? Then, you know, I don't want to talk about it. agreed. Have a nice day. So. Well, the website, by the way, folks, is IRS Bounty, IRS Bounty dot com. Now, for the record, I, I'm promoting this whole thing. Yesterday, I talked about the idea of every American, and I narrowed it down to the 20 million of us who are actually willing to stand up and fight, right? And if each of us kicked yep. in five bucks, that would give us a $100 million pool, which would enable us to put a $1 million bounty out on 100 whistleblowers, or four 100 whistleblowers. And I'm not just limiting it to the IRS. I want it in the EPA. I want it to be functional in virtually any and every area that we can I mean it can work for the it can work for the Department of the Interior it could work for the IRS yep. it could work for the F FBI the ATF you know the NSA anybody yeah well you know this is the thing a lot of Americans I'm going to give you a legal term it's called a QTAM QTAM is a legal is a legal term and it's a it's you, you know people are protected under the whistleblower law and the way yeah but the those federal, but they, they're protected under the whistleblower law. But look what happens to these people who have been coming out for years now exposing what's going on in the VA. Well, no, no. What you have to do, though, this is, this is the problem. What you have to do is you have to actually file the lawsuit yourself. And it's called a QTAM lawsuit. And, and basically what happens is you get a percentage of what you, you uncover. And I, I know individuals. I, have, I know of one individual who – it's kind of ironic, though – he was actually he owned the hospital um, in in Chicago, and he was you know prosecuted under the uh, Clinton administration about fifteen million dollars. His hospital was fined for inappropriate uh, billing of Medicare Medicaid patients, which it, you know it's kind of crazy. They they it was it was well known that it was a uh, a government fundraising effort by Clinton uh, because they got everybody. They got every hospital. They said, oh, you guys have been billing Medicare, Medicaid wrong for the last five years, and it was across the board fine. So it just wasn't, but he owned the hospital, so he had to pay it. So he actually paid paid the fines, 
uh, he didn't not like a corporation where they negotiated. He actually wrote the check for fifteen million dollars personally out of his account. And what what's crazy is is about ten years later, he he filed a QTAM against the federal government and got it and, and uncovered a massive amount of Medicare Medicaid fraud in the state of Florida um, for home health care, and he filed a QTAM. And he ended up sharing in the in the revenue mm-hmm. that they save, you know, when they prosecute. So it, it can be done, and and that's what needs to happen. It's a little it's a little known uh, fact that well that you know, that requires you be but yeah but here's the problem that requires you be an I that requires you be an employee of the federal government in no. order to properly file that no 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 nope, not really if you have inside information on any on any fraudulent action with anybody that does business with the government or the government itself, and you could be an outside member, you know, you could be, and you file the QTAM. So, it, it well, here's here's my, solu- here's, my to find a, find here's my solution. Here's my solution. Here's my solution. Rather than all of us trying to gather together to win lawsuits against the federal government that ultimately we're all going to have to pay, let's just all kick in five yeah. bucks into the mutiny bounty fund yeah. and start making yeah. sure that we're routing out poison and we're routing out the the virus within within yes. uh, our government, and we're doing it as ag- I hear from individuals all the time. What can I do? I'm only one person. My vote doesn't count. I can't call my senator anymore. They hang up on me. They ignore me. I post on Facebook. Nobody cares. I've written stories, articles, letters. Nobody cares. Great. Let's put our money where our mouth is and start bribing people to come out here and spill the beans. Now. I I, I get it. I mean, right off the bat, that means that we've got to wait for the scummy likes of Eric Holder and so forth to actually do something about it when we expose it. But here's the point. Nothing at this stage in the game gets Americans more riled than seeing, you know, waste and fraud and abuse in our own government. And it's rampant and it's everywhere. It's not even hard to find. So but but we don't have the empirical proof to be. And and that's why I came up with the idea of the civilian ombudsman as well, that these civilian ombudsmen would be able to go in there and say, I don't work for you. I don't owe you any answers. The only answers I are I owe are to the American people. And I spill my guts to them on a national website that they can come and get a weekly or a monthly or a quarterly report and. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Now, the point is we can't ask the federal government to allow those ombudsmen there. They have to be, and it's going to be a hostile environment. I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. But we have an oh, obligation yeah. to ourselves, and frankly, that's about the only way we're going to be able to get this thing under control. So, well, yeah, uh, and, and <clears throat> is, well, and this is the problem that I have with mainstream media. You know, that was the purpose, and that's why the mainstream media or the media – you know, they were given the, the amendment. That's why the freedom of speech and, and all of that was, was put into the Constitution um, because, you know, this is the job of media. This right. was typically or traditionally was the job of media. You know, Watergate was uncovered because of the Washington Post. You know, a lot of uh, Iran Contra was uncovered because of the media. A lot of these things, but see, this is, this is the thing, is that you have a president who is media savvy. This president has built his whole empire, and I, I'm going to call it an empire. Call it what you want, but I'm going to call it an empire on the use of the media. His guys, Bill Ayers, all of those guys are are media are are just media experts. They destroy. I've seen it firsthand in Chicago, living here and being here, that they destroy individuals through the media, not through not through their their true character or whatever, but through the media. And I'm not saying. The Bill Ayers character because we know what scumbag he is, um, but what I'm saying is that they they actually attacked um, when when Obama was running for Senate. Very good men uh, attacked them through media, pulled up things that they did in college, which is you know I, I, you can't hold <clears throat> what a person does in college over their heads. I mean, for, you know. Well, <laughs> suffi- suffice it to say I mean, that <laughs> yeah, the, suffice it to say the reality is that. Everything in, in this system right now is beyond salvage yeah. at this stage, and that's really where we need to be. So I'm going to I'm gonna just take the know, last – go ahead. Well, I was going to say, instead of – you know, I want to go back – I want to circle back to your other point. Um, you know, there's a bet on – I mean, as, as everybody knows or people that, that know me from, from being on some of the other shows, you know, we're moving to Florida. There's a bet on how quick um, I'm going to become the mayor 
or the or the sheriff in the new town that we're moving into. Um, I say two years, but I mean to the point. To that point, what I'm telling people is, you know, if you've thrown up your hands to to what goes on in Washington D.C., which I understand that because I pretty much have too. That doesn't mean you know you still have local government. And if you really want to affect change, get inside the local government. That's easy to do. That's not hard. Um, it, it's it's it, all, it requires you to get off your butt and do something, but it's not as difficult, obviously, than running for as a Senate seat or a House Republican or a House a House Republican yeah. House seat or whatever. But you know, get into your local, get into your school boards, get in, go to your local meetings, do that. You know, those positions open up pretty much every two years. And, and most citizens can run. Once you're into those positions, then you can start influencing change. When the federal government comes to your sheriff's department and says, look, we're going to give you a million-dollar grant, but you're going to have to buy this militarized vehicle and everything, you, if you're sitting on the board of your, of your local community, can say, well, wait, we don't want you here. You know, we don't want – and you know what? When you start, when you, start t- um, you know, turning away their money – and they're, you know, like a drug, you know, they're drug dealers. That's basically what they do. They get communities hooked on the on the federal money, and um, and you start turning that stuff away. You're going to start influencing change. People are going to start taking notice, and uh, you, you, you'll see. You'll, well, and, and that's po- what all politics is local, and yeah, that's the only yep, way to government. that's the only way to control yep. it. There's no doubt about it. So yep, absolutely. So you take care, <laughs> my friend. You have a great day. Thanks. And, uh, I, I love the new the new phone system. I love the fact that I can talk to you. I it's awesome. <laughs> I, and we've had struggled so long and so hard for to try to make phone systems work that we could rely on and it's been it's been nothing but problematic and this is just an this is an absolute blessing. So I'm I'm thrilled with it. Thank you. So All right. Thank All you. right. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Folks, uh, the, um, if you'd like to call into the program, you can. It's 573-453-5505. That's 573-453-5505. Um, all right, so our first segment is this three-page uh, VA accountability bill was blocked by the Senate. I mean, that's an absolute outrage. Our second issue is the IRS bounty for information and the new hashtag, pound, mutiny bounty. Our third segment is going to be federal land takeovers that leave our borders wide open. Many of you may or may not be aware that the federal government is going to be leading or or driving a brand new designation for a uh, massive land takeover that uh, a new national monument that is going to uh, cover a vast uh, territory that, by the way, is bumps right up against the border, but it prohibits and blocks all access to that federal land, including from law enforcement, not to mention the fact that it bars access to that land for things like drilling and access to the natu- natural resources, blocking pipelines and so forth and so on. Uh, so we're going to uh, address that in our third segment. And in our fourth segment, Secretary of Defense Hagel came out yesterday and said what we all know has been going on but really haven't actually had the opportunity to hear right out of the horse's mouth. <laughs> Did I pause there just long enough for you to get the gist? I got gotcha. you. Here's what he had to say. He admits that the new world order is being built. And I'm going to let you hear it right out of the horse's mouth. All right. Here's the real challenge, America. Whether or not you you recognize how far, you know, we've come on this thing. We are at a time in in terms of being able to take back our country. And and frankly, I, I don't know what people are waiting for. This issue here of... Of, of the uh, Senate refusing and blocking this bill that would increase accountability. In the, and this is only the Department of the VA. This wasn't for all federal employees because, again, remember, you can't sue. I mean, you can't um, fire a federal employee. It's almost impossible. And their public service unions, which frankly should be disbanded, the whole argument of a public service union that actually protects you from the government which is supposed to be protecting all of us, is an oxymoron. I mean, it's, it's insane. The fact that, that, that it was blocked is unconscionable. And Sanders, I mean, th- th- this guy is just, it's, it's unforgivable, literally unforgivable. Listen to this. this is 30- we need 
to step up to the plate to help not only our veterans but their families. And that's the legislation that I have authored. So what I say to Senator Rubio, your legislation has many important provisions which I happen to agree with. There are some that I think need work on, and we are going to hold a hearing on that legislation and other legislation in early June. So I blah, 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 blah. We're going to hold another hearing. We're going to accomplish nothing. Meanwhile, we had a three-page three bill that could have resolved the problem of at least allowing us to be able to fire people who are dealing drugs, beating on patients, refusing to take care of patients, and he blocks it. He blocks it with the argument that no one can argue with. The Senate hasn't had a chance to read it. The only problem, ladies and gentlemen, it was, his only, it was only a three-page bill. They could have read it from the time they left their office walking in the hallways and standing in the elevator to the time they actually had to go vote. You see, this is unforgivable. And I got to tell you, this thing with Sanders, this was a setup. A bunch of Democrats voted for it in the House. But they knew that Sanders was going to block the bill when it made it to the Senate. So it was a gimme vote. It was a freebie. They knew that the bill was never going to get passed. But now they can go home to their constituents and say, well, I voted for it. It's all a sham, ladies and gentlemen. And frankly, I don't know about you, but I am just sick to death of shams, lies, betrayal, and, and Americans paying the ultimate price. Not only our veterans uh, who are paying the price in pain and injury and, and, and the decline of their physical health, much of which was caused by the actual military and the government itself that is supposed to be taking care of them. I mean, it's... In okay, we're out of time on this segment. I, I'm just... Man, I tell you what. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the IRS bounty for information. Do yourself and me a favor. We've been trying to raise some funds here on America's Voice Now. You can donate directly on our website at americasvoicenow.org through PayPal. You can also mail us a check if you prefer or a money order. We are, we are uh, desperately in need of your support and your funding. You can mail it to America's Voice Now, P.O. Box 1195. That's 1195, West Plains, Missouri, 65775. Or you can go to our website at americasvoicenow.org. Use, use PayPal there. In addition to that, you can also go, if you're in need of, if you're in need of a resume tune-up, you can go to AmericanResumeService.com, AmericanResumeService.com. There, you can get their $200 resume package for $100, and they will donate the whole $100 to America's Voice Now. So can, you can get yourself a brand-new, refreshed, and cleaned-up resume with all the pertinent facts that are currently being looked at for jobs. And uh, let's face it, the job, com the job arena out there is very competitive. And at the same point in time, you can help support America's Voice Now. It's a win-win situation. We're going to take a quick break. Make sure that you visit our friends over at uh, uh, Battery Station. You can reach them at BatteryStation.com. BatteryStation.com. Uh, you can also call them at 417-257-7799, or you can visit them at 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains, where you can find everything for batteries and everything for your bug-out bag, your survival needs, your long-term self-reliance needs. They are an outstanding company. We'll be right back. <laughs> 